Taoiseach, 20 years ago, a doctor said to me that if I found myself in hospital, to make sure that I asked for a second opinion. Because 20 years ago, he said that that doctor might have been on his or her feet for up to two days. Now, this morning on the way to the Dáil, I stopped by St. Vincent's Hospital and spoke to some of the non-consultant hospital doctors who are uh, striking outside. And 20 years later, they were saying a lot of the same things. Now, we all know they don't want more money. In fact, what they said to me this morning was, if the proposals that they are putting forward in terms of shortening their working week were accepted, they actually think their overall pay would fall. So it's not about money. So I asked them what kind of things that they and other non-consultant hospital doctors might be doing after a day and a half flat out in the hospital. They said they might have to perform a lumbar puncture. They said they might have to resuscitate patients in the emergency department. And they told me about colleagues who had fallen asleep uh, during operations in operating theatres. Now, Tishuk, I don't know if you've ever worked 36 hours in a row. I, I imagine you probably have. I, I know I have. And I know that after 36 hours, I wouldn't be fit to change a light bulb. Now, a few months ago, we sat in the dole until 5 a.m., and there was consternation. And someone commented in the corridor outside at about 5 a.m., when everybody was blind with the tires, that now we would be halfway through the shift for a non-consultant hospital doctor. Tishik, as you know, two of their colleagues tragically committed suicide in the last year. You know that over half of our newly qualified non-consultant hospital doctors are now leaving the country. Question, please, Dip. I will. You know, and we now know that the ones that have remained here have finally mobilised. And I say fair play to them for finally mobilising. That Tishik, this crisis was not created by your government. It is not a crisis of your making. But it is a crisis that you can resolve, and it is an opportunity to get this thing Right. So, Tisha, can I ask you, do you accept the need not just to limit the working shift to a maximum of 24 hours, but that there is a need for binding sanctions on the HSC? Because as we listen to the doctors, the words they use are lack of credibility, lack of accountability, lack of trust. There has been a breakdown in trust, and therefore what they want is binding sanctions. So, can I ask you if you would stand over guaranteeing to the non-consultant hospital doctors that binding sanctions, which the HSE cannot simply ignore, will be brought in as part of the package. Thank, Thank you, you Deputy Gascon Corley. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first thing, uh, Deputy Donnelly, is that this strike should end. Uh, and that's why I would again say to you, as somebody who spoke to doctors this morning, it's absolutely uh, it, critical that the LRC be able to engage both with the HSE uh, and the uh, NCHDs in this matter. That's where it's going to be sorted out. And the only people who really suffer as a consequence of it not being sorted out there are patients and outpatients, people waiting for, for treatment. Now, I agree with you. 20 years ago, uh, the situation was as you point out. And after 14, of the last 14 years, you've had no real movement on this because of a failure to engage in a process or put in place a process where this could be sorted out. And Minister Riley, in fairness to him, with all the other problems and challenges that he's had in health, has brought this to a point where, um, where some significant progress is made. Now, why is it, Deputy Donnelly, maybe when you're on your way home, ask the doctors, how is it that NCHDs in radiology, pathology, emergency medicine and psychiatry are all fully compliant. But in the area of obstetrics, paediatrics, anesthesia, surgery and medicine, they're not. So how is it that in, in hospitals all over the country, some specialities are fully compliant and others do not appear to be? Now, is that a case, is that a case of managers not being able to manage it? Is it a case of, is it a case of shortage of staff? That they've, that all of these things. And the place, Deputy Donnelly, and your point is very valid, believe you me, the point is very valid. The place to sort that out is to take the proposition by the, by the doctors and by the HSE and go back into the Labour Relations Commission and deal with it. Because there are two propositions on the table now about sanctions. And if there's a difference of opinion here, surely they can arrive at a compromise that is workable, that will see the directive fully implemented by the end of next year, and that will not distress 
patients further. As I met two yesterday who've been fasting all day, waiting for, for treatment today, and then it's caught off. So it's, it's a distress for people. But the, the answer lies, Deputy Donnelly, in the, in the tried and trusted negotiation process of the LRC. There are two propositions tabled. Go back into the Commission and, uh, and, and, and sort it out. And obviously everybody here is interested in seeing that the directive is fully uh, implemented and ministers set the target for the end of next year and has made significant progress on that despite 14 years of inactivity. Margaret, Deputy Donnelly, supplementary. Thank you, Taoiseach, thank you uh, for your answer. Um, the question you ask is why is there no consistency? Why are some parts of the HSC compliant? Why are other parts? There may be medical procedural reasons I'm not aware of, but it's a very interesting question because it raises for Dole Aaron the fact that the, simp the, the, the strike we see today, whilst nominally about sanctions, should sanctions be applied or not? Personally, I think they should be, which is the, the, the question I want to come back to. But it is symptomatic of a malaise within the HSE. The HSE would appear to be an organization where there is very little transparency, where there is huge inconsistency in how medical professionals and patients are treated, um, and where there is a lack of transparency. They're not subject, we all know that they're not subject, for example, to any meaningful parliamentary oversight. They are immune from parliamentary questions. So there is a, there is a very large cultural issue here, which I think your government could begin to address Taoiseach. But it does require root and branch reform, which opens up professional bureaucrats, some of whom are excellent, some of whom are not so excellent, which opens them up and makes what they do transparent and critically makes them accountable ultimately to this house, to Dole Aaron. So Taoiseach, can I ask, do you agree that we have a major issue and ideally an opportunity in terms of increasing transparency and accountability in the HSE. And finally, back to the strike today, Tisha, can I ask you, do you agree with the thrust of an, an ask for binding sanctions? That essentially the doctors are saying, yes, we will negotiate, but we no longer trust the HSE. We simply don't trust them. So if the deal on the table is the HSE saying, we promise we won't make you work more than 24 hours, we promise we won't do that, do you accept that it is, that it is reasonable for the doctors to no longer accept that promise and therefore would you support their call for some form of binding sanction? Thank you. Maybe not the one specific one they're asking for, but some form of binding sanction on the hospitals, on the HSE. Thank Come you, Lasky and Court. And Tisha, final reply on this. First of all, in respect of... Uh, transparency within the HSE, no more than any other uh, organisation or agency or government department, clearly that's, uh, that's a given. And that's why the Minister wants to transfer responsibility for the vote back to the Department of Health so that it's answerable in here. Uh, Deputy Donnelly is aware that when, when an estimate is concluded in respect of, of a budget every year, that the, when the Minister for Health signs off on it with the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, it's then necessary for the HSE and the Department to produce a plan and a strategy to deal with that. In the past, these have not, in some cases, uh, corresponded with the, um, with the estimate that was actually produced. So it's very important, and that's a given, that there be transparency properly. Uh, in respect of sanctions, they're never going to work in any event unless there's a, a, a measure of agreement between the doctors and the managers in the hospital. Now, I don't have the details of all the reasons why some areas, uh, some hospitals are compliant and others are not. But my understanding, Deputy Donnelly, is that on the table there are two propositions here from the HSE and from the doctors in respect of sanctions. That's the point of difference. Now, whether they be binding in the way the doctors are speaking about or whether there be another form of sanction, clearly manager's job is to manage and doctors obviously perform a critical service, the public service, uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the good and the, the health of our people. So I would, I would say, like, the place to sort it out is at the LRC. It's not across the airwaves. Um, that's a, a tried and tested forum. And I would, I would say to the, uh, to the NCHDs and to the HSE, um, this is a matter that has to be resolved. And it will be resolved and can be resolved through the, um, through the forum of the LRC. And I would, I would say to both sides, the invitation is there for them. The propositions are on the table. Surely it's possible 
uh, to work out a solution to this and not have people who are um, distressed and very put out because of the situation that applies at the moment. So I do hope that following your valid question uh, that this will be responded to in a positive fashion and uh, hopefully can be resolved so that uh, understanding that we want to get to a point at the end of next year where the, the, where the working time directive is fully implemented in respect of, of, of all the doctors and all the hospitals as should be many years.